Okay, here are a few graphing unit questions to practice for our final exam. Start here. Here is a table of values for x and y. And the question might be, well, fill in the table. We've got some missing bits, right? We've got that spot there, that spot there, that spot there. And they need to uh, be filled in. So we're looking at the pattern for x independent of the pattern for y. The pattern for x seems to be we go from negative 3 to 0, then to 3. Here we went up by 3. Here we went up by 3. Here we're probably going to go up by 3 again. So 3 plus 3 should be 6. And if we continue that trend, plus 3 should be 9. And another plus 3 should be 12. So if we have an, the same step each time, that means we're probably looking at the right pattern. On the right for the y's, we go from negative 7 to 2. That looks like we're going up by 9. Then we go to 11, which is also up by 9. Then we go to 20, which is also up by 9. So this has got to be 29 right there. And 29 plus 9 better get us to 38, and it does. So to fill in the table of values here, we've, we've done that. We've just noticed the pattern for x, continued it. Noticed the pattern for y, continued it. In a test, there might be more missing information. You might have to find uh, more bits, but the same idea. We also might be asked, what's the equation? And remember, the equation that we're looking at in this course is going to be something in the form of y equals mx plus b. m being the slope, x is x, and b being the y-intercept, which happens when x is 0, the question is, what is y? So that question is actually answered directly on our chart, right? When x is 0, y is 2. So I know that's a 2. I know x is an x. I'm looking for the slope. Remember slope? We can define a bunch of different ways. We can call it rise over run. We can call it change in y over change in x. We can call it pick any two points, subtract the y values, pick the same two points, subtract the x values, they all mean the same thing. How much does it go up for how much it goes sideways on the graph? So here it looks like we're going up by 9, right? And here it looks like we're going up by 3. So our rise over run is, or change in y over change in x, is 9 over 3. And 9 over 3 is just 3. So our slope is 3. So the equation of this line could be y equals 3x plus 2. Let's look at a different table of values over here. Uh, same idea, let's try to find what the equation is. If we look on the left side for the x values, we've got negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. This is going up by 1, right? Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. The simplest, most inviting pattern. So remember our equation, y equals mx plus b. m is our slope, and b is our y-intercept. So here we're going up by 1s. Here we're going up 5 to 7 to 9 to 11 to 13. Looks like we're going up by 2 each time. So for our slope, we can say rise over run or change in y value over change in x value. Our y value changes by 2, positive 2, every time our y value changes by 1. So our slope is 2 over 1, or 2. So my slope is 2. My equation is y equals 2x plus whatever my y-intercept is. And remember, that's asking when x is 0, what is y? And again, uh, given, it's often given, or at least easy to figure out, so when x is 0, y is 7. So the equation of this line might be y equals 2x plus 7. Let's do something else here. Here's a, a multiple choice, which is weird to do in a video, but whatever. The ordered pair, negative 3, 2, is a solution for, and we have these different uh, choices, a, b, c, d. And for this, all we need to do, it's a little bit slow, but all we need to do is remember that they're always telling us x value and then y value. So we just put those x and y values in. So 
here, let's make the y's orange and the x's, I don't know, green. So wherever there's an x, wherever there's a y, I'm just tracing over because I feel particularly lazy right now. Um, we're going to put in those values. So our y value is 2 and our x value is negative 3. So I'm just going to rewrite these. Let's rewrite a y, which is 2, is equal to 3x, which is negative 3, plus 2. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. I add 2 and I get negative 7. Negative 7 does not equal 2. It's not a. For b, y, which is 2, remember, uh, is equal to, or sorry, minus 6 times x, which is negative 3 up there, is equal to 20. So, sorry, 2 minus 6 times negative 3, yeah, is equal to 20. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. 2 minus negative 18 is the same as 2 plus 18, which is 20. So 20 equals 20, it should be B. Let's check the others just to be sure, though. Here we have 2y equals 3x minus 6. This is for C. 2 times y, which was 2, is equal to 3 times x, which was negative 3, minus 6. So that's 4 equals negative 9 minus 6. Negative 9 minus 6 is going to be negative 15, and that is not 4. Last one to check, which had better be wrong, is D. 6x minus 20 equals 2y. 6 times x minus 20 equals 2 times y. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. Minus 20 equals 4. Negative 18 minus 20 is negative 38, and that is also not for our left side and our right side don't balance. So only one of them works, it's B. You just plug in the values and you see, does the left side and the right side actually balance out? Another type of question you wanna not be able to do is just identify um, the coordinates. Remember on our Cartesian plane, anything from the center, the origin, anything to the right on the x-axis, remember this is the x-axis, is positive. Anything to the left on the x-axis is negative. If we go up, which is the y-axis, that's positive. And if we go down, which is the y-axis, we go negative. So in this, in this quadrant, all of our x values are positive, all of our y values are positive. In quadrant 2, all of our x values are negative, all of our y values are positive. In quadrant 3, they're both negative. And in quadrant 4, we have positive x's and negative y's. So if they ask you which points have negative x values, OK, that means it's on the left. We're looking over here. And positive y values. That means we're looking above uh, the origin. So that's just these two, C and D. Possibly tricky one is E. E is neither up nor down from the x-axis line, which means that it is not positive or negative. And they wanted a positive y value, not 0. If it's lying on the line, it's neither positive nor negative. OK, that's a short one. Well, not, not that short. We'll do another one for geometry coming up next.